hit the record button. What's up, you guys? All right, so this is going to be a roundtable discussion on today. If people hop in late, that is fine. So when I say roundtable discussion, that means that everybody is going to be input, okay? We're going to ask questions. My name is Rachel Wiggum. For those of you guys who don't know me, I am an ambassador diamond, been here at the company for nine years. So through nine years in transitions, I've been doing school, back to school for nine years. Um, I have a 15 year old who is starting college classes on campus. So he will be doing college classes and going to his senior year of high school. Um, you know, normally people do dual credit like in class. <laughs> No, he's actually going on campus. So yeah, pray for me. And then on top of that, um, I have a four-year-old, two-year-old. They're both in school um, as well as a eight-month-old. And I'm trying to find out, you know, if God want to increase me about 10K, she will be going to school too. Because listen, um, I'm a private school mom. How about that? So let me tell y'all this. Like I have been able to keep my kids in private school because of it works. So if you if that is something that is on your heart, just know that your business can do that for you. And maybe you need to step out on faith and kind of go go into it because that's really what it all boils down to. It's not, oh, I just got the money sitting around. It's I faith it, y'all. Like I legit, my my business is a hundred percent a faith walk. And so you guys want to kind of keep that in mind if that's something that you desire. So the first thing I want to start with before we kind of open it up to see where we are and who we have in the room. If you are in the room, come into the room, come on in the room, like come on into the room, get your pen and paper. Let me see your face. Unless you are just not, we are a high communication team. So I'm going to, since you're in, under our, um, under my toolage today, I'm just hooked on that word today. I don't even know why. I mean, it's weak, weak lately. I've said it like three times, okay? Learning new words, because you can always learn, okay? That's why we're on the Zoom. But anyways, um, you know, come on in the room. I don't care what you're looking like. It's good to see faces. So thank you guys for showing your faces. So the first thing that we're going to do, guys, is um, talk about our why. Because I think ultimately, the only way that you fight through transitions is because you have a why that you're doing this business. And I know you guys have heard that your why can't be your why not, right? This is facts. The reason why you do this business cannot be, okay. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? So whether you're a teacher, whether you're in school, um, whatever, let's say this, going into the school, school season, right? August through December, please tell me, what this business in the comments, drop in the comments, what this business is going to do for your family financially or what you would like it to do for your family. What would you like it to do for you or your family? If it's just you, your dog, whatever, if you're single, that's fine. But what do you want this business to do for you and your family through this fall season? Drop it in the comments. Danielle, it's good to see your face, boo. I miss you. I had such a good time with you in Atlanta. Yes. Y'all get to an in-person event. Shout out to my crew. I miss y'all. Um, I better see y'all at the Ruby Retreat. Okay. Yes, be Ruby or higher so y'all can come rock with me. What's up? Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. All right, for real, everybody, drop in the comments. I, I will tell y'all minds out loud, okay? This business covers everything, okay? Everything. So it's tuition, it's um, sports, it's college. I got to pay college fees. He's in a lab. It's chemistry. It's maybe a car. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Because I can decide that, right? Because I can take my kid to school because I work for myself. Won't he do it? Um it's everything, you know, we think about putting Zayden on a swim team because he a swimmer, okay? So if we want to do that, we can do that. It's still date my husband. It's still field trip Friday. It's still living life. It's still being able to give. It's Christmas on fleek. Like, it's all the things. I have every reason to fight through the transitions of school. It's maintaining my, my freedom of being a full-time entrepreneur. It's all the things, right? Yeah. So drop in the comments your reason to fight through the fall, through the fall season. I heard that many and petty regularly, okay? And pay off my cards and pay for tuition and travel, girl. All of them. 
all of them i want a nanny low-key but the girl i want to be my nanny she finna go to college i don't trust everybody yeah support my church pay for sports retire while i come on shante and retire in the fall i heard that tuition for all four kids uh miss kim if you know you know i felt that for real how many of y'all here paying for daycare oh lord praying for you praying for you car for your grandbaby's travels and ties yes continue to pay off renovations around the house that's awesome Crystal. oh and i also have to send you um an email address i finally got somebody so i gotta send it to you yes all right so here's the thing I want you guys, um, it's not that many of us on here. So you can either, um, let's start with dropping in the comments just so that we can, for time's sake, what is your transition going into school? Say I'm a parent of four, I'm, I'm a teacher, I'm a, what is your, I'm in school, I'm in grad school, I'm an undergrad. Like, what is your transition? I, I coach people who are teachers. Um, what is the transition that you are going through? All right, yes, undergrad. Teacher in the house, yes, Kamisha should be ready to give us all the tips. Parent, yes, girl. Parent of three, mama two, mama four. Yeah, parent of four. Look at y'all, parent of fours. Drop down and get your ego on, girl. All right, parent of four, three is cool. <laughs> parent of one, elementary, one in college, girl, yes. Parent of two, teacher. All right, so it looks like we have grandparent. I heard that, Lorraine. Um, it looks like we have a little of everything. So I'm going to start with my tips, and then I'm going to have some. Y'all going to just share, because I ain't going to have to call on y'all, okay? Praise the Lord, everybody. Can I get a praise the Lord in the comments? Y'all been act like y'all been in church, because when you say that, you're supposed to say it back, okay? Say it back, call and response. All right, so... I have been hooked on. I'm actually finally reading. I told my what some of my leaders, I was like, I'm reading Miracle Morning finally. Okay, I'm going to finally read it. I read the 5 a.m. club, was obsessed with the 5 a.m. club, but Miracle Morning is just different. And so I have decided to jump into my Miracle Morning, like fully commit to it. And so I'm going to tell all of you guys, I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care if you're an undergrad. I don't care if you're in grad school. I don't care if you are a parent, you need to jump into a miracle morning and commit to your 30 days. So Lydia is going to drop, or Keisha is one of somebody, is going to drop the video. Y'all found the video for the free 99. So one of them going to drop the video and you're going to click it and save it. And you're going to watch it tonight, if not tomorrow. Okay. You're going to watch it and you make a decision on whether you want to do the miracle morning or not, but your morning routine is going to be the most important and you need to start now. You need to start now, not the day that school starts. You need to start now. So your morning routine is going to be really important. Repetition is, is, is key. All right. So I was talking about this on Claire's call the other day, like repetition in meals, um, I don't know if you got, if you don't have to make lunches, like shout out to you, but I have to make my kids lunches. All my kids take lunch. And so the repetition, like, for example, like my boys love macaroni. Yeah. They take macaroni for lunch. And so all I gotta do is make a big pot of macaroni and they can eat that for lunch all week long. Okay. And then you can bag up grapes. You can clean them. So when you go to the grocery store, clean and package, you know what I'm saying? Like go the extra mile, but the repetition is key. Stop trying to be the fancy mom unless you got fancy mom in your spirit. All right. You know what I'm talking about? If you got it in your spirit, do you boo and make sure you make some reels along the way. So moms like me can just watch. Okay. But um, if it's not in your spirit, don't do a lot. Don't do a lot. Be out here trying to cut stars and you frustrated, like chill out. It's okay. They don't need to start. They just need to eat. So repetition is key. Um, calendars. Y'all, you have to have, well, my suggestion an hourly calendar for yourself. You can use Google Calendar to correspond with your family. So with your spouse or whoever else is helping you with your kids or your life. And then family calendar. And I actually have my family calendar right here. Already starting filling in. 
So we can be aware of who has school when, who gets picked up when. But my husband and I also correspond in our Google calendar so I can know when his haircuts are like straight up. When I'm, He can know when I'm going to get my nails done so that there is no confusion of who's going to be when, when you're partnering with somebody, especially when it comes to your kids. So this is our family calendar that sits in our kitchen. And then we use a Google calendar and then I use a personal hourly calendar to block out my time. Y'all, Miracle Morning will go into this, but y'all got to start moving your bodies, okay? Like straight up. I don't care if you go for a walk, you need to move your body. As a full-time entrepreneur, as a part-time entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, period, your mind, you owe it to your mind to move your body. And you own a health and wellness business. You can take a walk, bruh, bruh. Like, you know, on the Miracle Morning video, I saw this guy, that they had the trampolines. Let me find out I can get a trampoline and just jump on it for a few minutes and be tired. We might have to get that. Figure it out. Like, figure it out, guys. Like, you can literally go for a walk, even if it's just for 30 minutes. You can go, yeah, that's what I was talking about, Bianca. Yes. All right, let me hurry through so somebody else can talk. Um, pivot game. You got to have a strong pivot game. Your pivot game got to be on point. All right? You know how you got to take the feelings out the follow-up? You got to take your feelings out the pivot. So when things don't go the way that you desire them to go, oh, well. And kids, people who got more than two kids know exactly what I'm talking about. You you literally got to have a strong pivot game. So and you have to learn how to improvise. And then you also have to learn how to be effective with working your business on the go. Do you get what I'm saying? So like, for example, for me, I'll talk about me personally. I, uh, when it comes to me personally, like if I am taking my kids to school, I may sit there for five minutes. But I'm going to do a 6 a.m. power hour. So I will really be on the um, the defense now because I, I sent out messages. And my goal is to get out 100 messages plus during the 6 a.m. So now throughout the day, I am literally just showing my day and responding to people and making a reel when I feel froggy. Be Unless I make my reel on the 6 a.m., which we've started doing. If your team does not have a 6 a.m. power hour, you need to start it. And East Coast people, you may have to start the 6 a.m. That's right. East Coast never eat. Yeah. Never eat soggy wheat. They're terrible. <laughs> East Coast. And then the West Coast, y'all may have to start a, um, what time is that? Seven, seven, six, eight, eight a.m. to do a 6 a.m. there. So if you can't get on the 6 a.m. Central time one, you may have to be the one to lead the the one for your coast like straight up make a decision like tonight so that we can start e effectively implementing this for real you should have a work time before your day starts um ask for help P write that down ask for help and i don't mean just in your business i mean in every aspect of your life Pray to God send you the right people who can support you. Build a village. Stop telling people that you don't have nobody to help you. That's a lie. Open your mouth and ask for help. For real. Because me and my neighbors, we buddy buddy now. And let me find out. They want to help me out. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Stop being in isolation and ask for help. How many, drop a one in the comments if you like to help people. <laughs> That's why you're here. Mm. drop a two in the comment if, if you if you struggle with letting people help you now please tell me why somebody should let you help them i'm for real this i mean this is something i had to overcome why in the world would i let you help me when you won't let me help you riddle me that so your help good enough for my name i'm for real because sometimes it'd be like you just won't do it like me but boo, you maybe you can't do it like me so maybe you can't help me like this perspective right so ask for help 
And right now I rebuke your past situations and bad past circumstances where people didn't come through. We let that go tonight. All right. Maximize your time. You got to get into them pockets. You got to get into the pockets. All right. Who, who, who else got some tips for us? I'm listening. Come on in the room. Come on, guys. I want to see your face. I guess I can share where I have a quiet moment. Well, semi-quiet, okay? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to start with this. This is kind of like a little bit off, especially, ex especially Black women. You will understand this. But this is the time of year. It's probably like all year round. But you even have to even have to take into mind the hairstyles that you choose things that'll take less of your time. I know it's something that's not directly in, directly into it, but maybe in this season, you can't, maybe in the season of bonnet is all you can do. So think of the protective styles that you're getting. Maybe this is a season for braids or crochets or what hairstyle can I get where I can still look great and I don't have to spend so much time on my hair. Listen, I know that was not, but... <laughs> It, you know, sometimes I got to do every day. I got to brush my hair. You know what I mean? That's like, that's not to say don't take care of yourself because you got to look good, but just say, you know what? I'm going to choose something. Maybe I'm going to have to do the box braids. I'm gonna, you know, maybe I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get a collection of headband wigs or whatever it may be so that you can, you know what I mean? So that you can say, I don't have, I just don't have the time to be that present for that. Um, another thing along with, um, and there's one of my daughters. With the with the acts for help, know who's around you who's good at certain things that you can go to them and ask. So what what is like your your reference list, right? Um, so typically like a, a person could could come to me about a recipe, but perhaps I would need to go to someone. Well, how do you get your hey Jackson? How do you get your kids um, to clean up after themselves, right? I may need to ask someone else for it, but, but who else can you ask? Know that in advance, right? Like, who are my list of people? Who are those moms or dads that I know, man, they really thrive in this area. And we become like this circle, this community of people who can cross reference. And so it's not, a, I don't have to be great at everything. I just gotta, you know what I mean? I gotta say, okay, I know I'm gonna get this from here. I know I'm gonna get this from here. I know I'm gonna get this from there. Um. When it comes to like the scheduling and the lunches, I do. Jackson, can you go in there with daddy? Jeff, can you, <laughs> it, you have to learn to, uh, you have to learn to hear your kids but keep going as well, right? They don't, they don't run your house, right? But, but they're, they're also, she's also three. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get upset with her for being a three-year-old, even if it is frustrating me, right? And so sometimes you have to have that grace and say, you know, my one-year-old is going to act like a one-year-old. My two-year-old is going to act like a two-year-old and I am the adult. So I have to figure out how to continue and, and, and gain the patience to be able to, to follow through, through it or go in the room and scream, whatever you need to do, because they only can be what they are, right? I, I don't want my three-year-old acting like a 15-year-old. I don't want that. I want her to be three. Right. Um, another thing is with like with simplifying the meals is there's something about especially like the age of like eight, right? Eight or even five, five up to eight. Letting them be a part of it. I asked Lily, you can pick two things. What would you like in your lunch? Right. And so making them a part of the scheduling, making them a part of what they're eating, it just makes them it just gives them, they understand the structure, making them a part of the structure of everything, right? This is what our day is. It's like, I'm not just giving it to you. I'm making this a part of it. And so then they be, they start to do this routine. So recently, like Rachel was at my house. She was about to clear my dishwasher. I said, don't clear my dishwasher, right? That's Lily's thing. I'm trying to get her in this habit of like, this is what I do. And like kids will listen if we help them build the habits before you know, you'd be like, Oh my gosh, she's over there cleaning the dishwasher and I did not say a word. Um, but involving them, involving them with the schedule. So like with that family calendar, I can say to her, okay, we know you have practice from this time to this time. Let's, let's look at this together. And what they'll do is it, they will become, it'll become clockwork for them, right? And that's less stress on you. It's less stress on you. It's less for you to do when you see they've picked out their pajamas. You see they've started the shower. You see they've emptied the dishwasher. You find yourself where you guys are partnering now, right? I'm partnering. If your kids get a certain age, you can begin to partner with them. Um, if you have a sports kid um, and it runs into it, it's like a sport outside of school, like my daughter's in gymnastics is out of school, open your mouth and talk to the administrators. Administrators. What I mean by that, let's say you have a practice, school's over at 245 a practice that starts at three and you have to commute, ask the administrator, hey, listen, my kid is in this sport. 
Can we agree if they continue to thrive and everything, are you okay with me pulling them out a little bit earlier without it being counted as an absence so they can have a smooth transition, right? And so as it's again, it's, it's asking what you need. So I had to send a formal email to her, to the um, director of her school asking for permission that, hey, I, want, I need to be able to pull her out because I need for her to be able to have a snack and to change and to commute without it being stressful. And I just had to ask and they partner. So people want to partner with you. You just have to open your mouth, right? She's like, we can do that. We won't count our apps as long as she can, you know? And so it was teaching her how to be a student athlete. That's what a student athlete is. So often they have to get out of school early. And so ask the questions instead of making the assumptions that people won't support you. It's that help thing again, like ask. If you ask, the worst they can say is no. And if they say no, you say, why? Because what I did before I asked her, I said, I noticed that this was recess or it was like the last one. It's fine, she's fine, you know what I mean? And so know your facts and, and ask, the, ask the questions. And I would say my, uh, my, my last things is find the things that you can begin to automate. And what do I mean by that is, um, you know, grocery delivery or pickup versus going to the grocery, you can get probably about an hour or two back of your time. Because between driving to the grocery store, roaming the aisles, I don't care if you have a list, you're still roaming the aisles. Roaming the aisles and then drive, getting back in your car and then putting them up, it's about two, two and a half hours of your time. How can I automate this, right? Can I order my groceries? Can I do pickup? Yes, you can. You can afford it. It, don't, it really doesn't cost more or any of those things. With Instacart, I pay like $10 a month. I always spend $30 anyway, so my delivery ends up being free. Um, so find the things that you can automate. Know the days. And last I'll say, it's like, for instance, I know on Tuesday, I have praise team rehearsal at six o'clock, right? Which my daughter will get out of practice at six o'clock. I know that I cannot stand in my kitchen and make dinner, but I also know that I have to feed my family, right? So either I have to have something for leftovers or I have to put something in the crock pot. So no in advance, right? So typically when you're overwhelmed, it is just because you have a bunch of thoughts in your head unorganized, not really because it's too much. It's just you haven't organized the things that are that are going on. All right. I know that because it's it's been me plenty of <laughs> plenty, you know, plenty of times. And so just you know in advance, most people are not busy on accident. It's just like, I know tomorrow the busy, the busyness that the day will bring. I know the day after. So you already know how busy you, you will be. And so plan to be busy, right? So I know I'm gonna be busy this day. So I'm not gonna be able to stay in the kitchen and make no fried chicken. You're gonna have to make the pot of spaghetti like Rachel said, and they gonna, kids love spaghetti, okay? I think you said it on one of your lives, like it be us that get mom guilt, right? That they want what they want. They want, what they want and they will eat it. They try all that other stuff because you because we give it to them, right? And so have a day of the week. Maybe Friday is the day that you try a new recipe. Maybe, you know, Saturday is the day that you do that. But like she said, it's okay. Like y'all get oatmeal. My oatmeal is the bomb, okay? My oatmeal is, is good, right? And even sometimes when you go in to make that pot of oatmeal, I have to start making more, more than enough because I can put it in the Tupperware and then I could just put a little almond milk in it the next day and warm it up. And so those are just, those are a little bit of my tips. I'm sure more will come as we begin to talk, but you know, I, I, you were, no matter how many kids you have, you were graced for that amount of kids, right? You were graced for it. So you have it, whether it's one, four or more, you were graced for it. And so you have exactly what you need to be able to take care of those children, whether single or married. I did want to jump in before I see Tammy and see your hand up. When Keisha said partner with um, the administration, y'all like straight up, if you desire to have your kid in private school, like go in there and say something. Seriously, there are a lot of private schools who will work with you. There are a lot of private schools that have scholarships. The only reason that your kids are not take partaking is because you won't go in there and ask because you're too prideful. And I said what I said go in there and ask there was a major time in the beginning where it was like yeah no I want him here but can I get can half off like or can I pay this later like it just is what it is because I wanted him in that space so don't be too prideful where you miss out on your blessing I will share this before the day starts, know what's non-negotiable. So things that are, because sometimes we'll let things that are unimportant take the place of the things that should have been non-negotiable. So what in your schedule 
100% you will do. Like 100%, you know, it's, it's my, my, P, my PMF SDPD, non-negotiable, you know, my, you know, your, what, what is non-negotiable in your schedule? So then as you, you know, really understand what you, what you, what you're going to say yes to, instead of focusing on the no's, like, what can I say? What am I going to say yes to today? Um, that way I know the things that I know for sure, these are the non-negotiable things that I can have to get done. So, you know, just really make it known like this is non-negotiable. Then as those negotiable things begin to creep up, you know, for sure is if not, I just have to say, I just have to say no to this. As bad as I would love to go to lunch with Susan, right? I don't know if anybody's name is Susan here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Susan, I have to say no to Susan because my non-negotiable list, unless Susan is okay with me having my phone in my head the whole time and watching me and perhaps joining my team, right? You know what I mean? You have to say, you have to know. And then that's when people begin to gain that respect for you as an entrepreneur and say you know what hey I would really love to do that today but I really got some business things or I would really love to do that today but I, I'm really committed to my prayer time I would really love to do that but I have to get the gym in um, so making those non-negotiables apparent like know them in advance like what's non-negotiable for me so that you can look at that list and so even as like the, it's the end of the day my kids will be asleep soon it, it, the day almost over, I can't do everything, but I can look at the non-negotiable things and say, you know what, I'm going to do this before I go to bed because it was a part of my non-negotiable list and it's worth it for me to stay up and get it done because I know it's something that's, you know, edifying me and pushing me forward some way. And can I encourage y'all to let you know that making TikToks, working out, um, personal and spiritual development is your job. It's your job. So don't let anybody like negate that. Oh, you make a TikTok? You sure right at making a TikTok. Like, and people who make you feel some type of way or make you feel like, first of all, address yourself because sometimes we make ourselves feel like it's a waste of time, but it's actually not. So you, you try to be like, like, I got so much going on in my life. You could literally work out for 10 minutes, 10, 10. You can do a 10 minute workout. Stop making excuses. No one believes them but you. Like, stop it. And I'm, I'm saying that to myself too. I, I told my leadership, I said, I've been saying for years that I work out seven days a week. Boo, go outside and take a walk. Like you can work out every single day. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop, stop minimizing it. Like you could, some of y'all legit right now, like you could be outside walking. You know what I'm saying? Well, on, on this call. So yeah. All right. I see two hands. So go ahead and just jump in guys. Well, for me, like at this point, you know, God bless everybody that got the babies. Thank God I ain't got to worry about that no more. But, you know, I was just sitting down because I have to I had to get me a calendar because I work a full time job. I'm running my business. I'm getting ready to start school and all this stuff. So I have to create my morning start at 5 a.m. because I'm in 5 a.m. prayer. I'm in, you know, my worship time with God. And then I'm like, God, OK, what is my next? What you want me to do? And then it's like, okay, I'm posting. I'm putting up like, you know, I got four LCs this month. Thank you, God. <laughs> it was hard work. But, you know, now there's the DT. So it's like, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Because I'm like, I'm going to get what I want. I told God what I want. And I made it plain what I'm looking for. Because it's no way. I want to be able to say to my full-time job, like I'm cutting my days, you know, I don't need to be working all hard, but you got to put the effort in. So now it's like for the ones that, you know, are got grown kids, like for me, like this week, these last couple of weeks, my, my second oldest daughter lost her 16 year old brother. So I'm dealing with that, that, that loss because he had the seizure in his sleep. I'm on my way to a candlelight vision when I jump off of here. So it's like, I got to balance life i got to and not only her but i'm also helping the mother cope you know through this because this is I'm, as a mother i went through it so this is this is the assignment that god has given me so in that i'm still balancing i'm still pulling like i still gotta push and at one point it was like it became overwhelming where i wanted to be like you know what i can't do this and i reached out to patricia because i'm like okay i'm frustrated like oh it's too much but then I got on a Zoom and on that Zoom, it was just like, okay, you know what? 
I ain't accepting no more excuses. It is what it is. The devil going to do his job. I got to do my job. So at the end of the day, it's like now I got to balance my life where I got a calendar where I got a set time where I'm up in prayer. I got a set time where I'm posting my business. I'm pushing my business. And I got my schedule for when my school, when I start school, where nothing is going to crash into each other, where it's going to become too much. You know, it's just finding a balance and allowing God to order your steps. You know, and like she say, they are, this is a community. This is the village. So if you stuck, if you feel like, you know, you at that, that moment, there is people to reach out to, you know, so I, I'm glad for the community. I'm glad, you know, because you, you don't feel like you're in this alone. Like I said, everybody posts, it's encouraging to me. I'm congratulating everybody that, that got their bonuses and all. I'm like, I'm next. That's all I know. I'm next, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's like, this is where we at, you know, life is going to happen. Stuff is going to happen, but we don't want to make that an excuse of not pushing forward and not gaining or getting what is out there for us. So, you know, I'm grateful to be a part of the village and the community. I want to jump in. <laughs> um, thank you for that. And one thing I want to say, um, someone touched on this, like in terms of like reaching out. Um, during COVID, like it was just so overwhelming for me, right? Like it was just, just everything. Like the, the, I feel like everything was coming down, right? Like you're so scared to go outside. You're trying to balance your family, you, you know, just like a little bit of everything. And um, for me, it was, um, it was like really finding someone to help balance my mental health. And I think that um, finding my therapist was like one of the best things that I ever did. And it's something in our community, especially that we do not speak about. Um, but it's very important. You know, I can't meet with her every week because my life is just too crazy to meet with her every week, you know. And so now I, I meet with her every other week and I pencil her in and you know, it, and sometimes it's 45 minutes. Sometimes it's only a half an hour. You know what I mean? Like, it just depends on what my day is looking like. But I get to get it out with this blank person that doesn't know my life, doesn't know anything, of, you know, other than what I decide to share with her that helps me, you know? So I think what's really big, and 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 my um my upline's actually on here, Merlene. She's like my other therapist. She's my therapist for my marriage. She's my therapist. You have to have those people that are um that that really keep you sane in all this because balancing you know we all know right like the the children the husband the extracurricular activity, like it's just a lot right and we got to give ourselves grace but we also got to know when to seek a professional that's gonna you know my therapist gave me and and then she holds me accountable too like okay so you said uh, guys I'm in school for my master's too in emergency management I'm a full time project manager like. And I'm, I'm doing this business full time too. Like, this is what it is. And mommy of two married. Okay, just to give you all a little bit. But she was like, let me hold you accountable. Like, you said, you know, you said this week that you were going to sign up for the fall. Like, what are your classes? And I'm like, Oof, I didn't sign up for them. Like, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I just can't think about that right now. And she's like, well, is it, is it important? Or are we taking it off the list of your priorities? Oh, this is something that you want, you know, like, and why do you want it? Right. Cause some, like, we know during the course of the year, your why change. Right. So now she dug in and asked me if that's still my why, if, if that's still my why, that's something that's still important. Then I had a, a, a sorority sister that I called. This is my last point. My sorority sister I called and I said, listen, I'm graduating in 23, May of 23. That's it. I'm done with the school. I've, I've, I've been out of college for 20 years. I had no business going back to school far gone I'm done I want this degree but I'm I'm you know I need you and she is when I tell you she's on me she is on me she is like what's the last email you sent to your professor what was your grades this last semester what's your paper do well how far are you with the paper? take a picture of it and send it to me accountability yes accountability but accountability partners that are really gonna hold you accountable because we know the easy people to talk to we know the people that's not really going to follow up with you, that's gone checking with you every other day or whatever. you got to find a real live accountability part. That's my therapist. That's my sorority sister. That's my upline. They're going to hold me to it. That's it. Yeah. 
All right. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. I'm using an earpiece trying to be quiet in the house. So um, I'm loving these chips and I'm just excited for continuing prep here in New Jersey. We don't start school to the end of August. So I have a little bit more time to prep, but I feel like getting into the group of things about two weeks before, as far as the kids going to bed on time is going to be key. Um, also, what helped me is since my son was diagnosed with autism about two years ago and having my dad full time, um, that, uh, who has dementia since my mom passed, it was like a whole bunch hit me at one time, which forced me to be structured and balanced and then challenged my mental health all at the same time. So having um, all of that play into play, you know, a lot of confidence was to stay today helped me out, but I had to get that opportunity. A lot of that came into play to help me out to be focused where now everything has a structure because, you know, dementia needs a structure, autism needs a structure. So me being a procrastinator in a blue, I'm, I'm more so of a fly by the seat of my pants, don't care about what's about to happen today, you know, I'm like, whatever. So that's me. So to turn into this structured person, which made me a green has been like, it's balanced me like my, my home life, my business, everything has a structure. And it also made me value me more because now I have to make sure my time is important. So whenever I schedule things, if you're not within that time frame, then you missed it because my time is important and I have to make sure I stay within it. So for you guys that's doing a lot and oh, and yes, I do pick up for grocery all the time. I'm not, sit, I'm not going to no store. I sit there and drive up and let them put it in the car and go or get it delivered to the house. If you can find one of those discount codes where it's free, utilize it too. So it helps me out to be able to not have to do so much. And well, you know, the, the, the smarter, the better. It helps me, <laughs> it helps me out. So, um, so yeah, and, and, and you know, karate class and, and schooling and everything, you know, and still making sure I put me first has been key. And I put them to bed on time, 8 p.m. Everybody sleep. Listen, dad too. Everybody sleep by eight. For me to have the time to myself for those last couple couple hours before I go to sleep too, because I'm I'm going to sleep now. I'm not staying up in the middle of the night working my business. I used to do that and it drove me crazy and anxiety was through the roof. My phone has been on silent for three years. That has been a, also a big change for me. And you just got to find that balance, like putting you first and screw what everybody else may think and say, but you got to put you first and you got to make sure that you understand your worth to help you with putting things in place. And yeah, we, 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 we on a schedule around here now, the summertime right now, we not, we eating real late today. And that's usually not how it go. We've done by six. So Everything has a place and um, it works out for you that way. You don't have to answer every message when it comes in. Like if you got it set up on your phone where it scrolls across your screen, you can pick and choose what needs to be, you know, what the importance is. And, 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 and staying close to the fire actually helps me stay on top of that. Plus accountability partners. But um, yeah, that's pretty much me with, with my balance. And I'm doing this alone. Listen, I'm a single mom of two boys that are 17 going to the 12th grade. And one going to the sixth grade and uh, still dealing with the grievance, you know, with my mom and my, my you know, the, the, that dementia mood swings ain't, ain't no joke. So to keep myself without having a box back, you know, that'd be, that'd be a whole nother battle. So, um, yeah, you, you, you can do it. Anybody else can do it, too. Hey y'all. So I um, just wanted to hop in really quick. Um, just a tip because I've been working this business for eight years. Um, and so, you know, showing up for your business every day means putting you first. And we're talking about mom and right now we put our kids first a lot. So we usually on the back burner, but it's important because your business is you, right? So when you lay your kids clothes out at night and you iron them through the week, you lay yours out too. OK, because every day you have to show up for your business. If you're full time, you got to look like a business owner. You when you get out that door, you're a business owner, you know, so you want to make sure that you're able to take a call. If you got to go meet somebody, you ready to walk out the door. You ain't got to get dressed. You ain't got to do any of these things. You're already ready for the day. You're showing up like your office. You have your designated office space. If you're a full time or even a part timer, you have a designated workspace. OK, you have to show up in uniform. What is your uniform? They, we, look, we got our business stuff, whatever it is for the day. Not saying that you got to put on heels and strut all that every day. That's not, if that's you, that's you, do you. But if it's not, 
Just look presentable to where you could get up and walk out the door and meet somebody if you had to, okay? Because this is your business. You are a walking mobile of your business. Our business gets to go with us, okay? So you always wanna get up and dress every single day. Okay, it's easy when you're at work from home, it's easy to fall into. I'm gonna throw on these pajamas. I'm gonna walk in my bonnet. No, sis, you gotta show up, okay? It's, it's okay sometimes, but sometimes you got to take it off. You have to put some respect on your business and show up like you got a uniform, okay? You have to put a show up in uniform. It's something about getting dressed every day as a woman. It make you be like, girl, you got it together today. Even if it ain't today, you got it together because you got dressed, okay? You won the day, you dressed today because you getting everybody else dressed and it's just like we at the end, right? So we always looking at like ponytail, bun, what can I throw a turban, throw a hat on? No, come on, let's put your stuff together, okay? Um, the next thing would be is having a swag bag. Okay, no matter if you're part time in this business or not, your business goes with you. Do you have coffee? Do you have wraps? Do you have any of those things on you when you're going places? Do you have a Blitz card? Do you have your mobile Blitz card in your phone to where you can send it to somebody? Do you, in your swag bag, do you have a paper and a, note, a pen, like a, a notebook? So that way you can write down these people's names, where you met them, their phone numbers, all these contact information to where you can follow up and you're growing your list, right? And so um, you always wanna make sure you have samples on hand no matter where you are. So your swag bag can stay in your car. It could be in your purse, but make sure wherever you're going, you have to have something with you, okay? And so that's really, really important because you're meeting people all the time. You're getting connects every time through the drive through You're meeting somebody. Anytime you exchange money, you're meeting a new person. Do they know what you do? Every time you exchange money, we always exchange money for something. So do they know what you do? They should, right? And so you just kind of keep a rule of thumb. We out here spending money. People, you want people to spend money with you. So you're just going to tell them, hey, this is what I have. This is what I do. Can I share this with you? Can I get your contact number? Hey, are you on Facebook? Let's be friends, okay? And so when you're doing that, people are looking at you as a business owner. So you want to make sure the face of your business looks like you want, what you attract, what you want to put out there, you're going to get back. So you want to make sure that you're putting out the best vibes possible. So make sure you're just dressing every day for your business and you just win in a day. So you have to take the time for you to get dressed as you're getting your kids um, prepared and everything. And before you go to work, make sure you pack your bag, restock your bag, check my bag. Let me make sure my swag bag's together before I go out this door because it's part of me, right? So that's always a must. First of all, I need to get with my blitzing because I just felt real convicted. I felt like, you know, like I was in trouble. But yes, that was good. That was good. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I only have a couple of tips, okay? And some of these I have learned along the way. So I'm not perfect, all right? So first and foremost, um, things that I've learned, like schedule your doctors and dentist appointments like for your entire family for the year. Like most of the time people go like three, like two to three times a year. So schedule those now so you can put those in your calendar. So then there's no question like, oh, maybe I need to schedule a doctor's appointment. No, it's already done. It's already in your calendar. Um, and then like um, Andrea was saying, lay your clothes out for the week. Like that's something I started doing with my son, even when he was in daycare, like I would lay out everything down to the onesie in the diaper that he was going to be in right before I dropped him off. It would be stacked up for the week. So then I can just um, be able to just get him dressed and be out the door, even with uniforms, lay those three or four pairs of pants out, those five different shirt options, whatever the case may be, um, so you can have them. And then um, I know me, I'm in graduate school and then I have him going to the second grade. So set certain times and days to do homework. Like I know for me personally, I'm full-time in this business. So Tuesday, Thursdays and Fridays are my homework days in graduate school. I don't do anything homework wise outside of that. Even with group projects, they know. You can't reach Lydia if it's any other day other than Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Um, and even do that with your kids, like time that you set aside to specifically work on homework with them to make sure that it's done um, and in on time. And then also like schedule your life down. This is something that Rachel helped me with. Schedule your life down, like to the shower. And my team knows like at a certain time, uh, Lydia in the shower right now, like <laughs> schedule your life down to the shower to create that routine so you can get into it all the time. And I've learned that even if you have it in there and it's not perfect, like if you 15 minutes late, that don't mean that you don't do it. You still go get in the shower. Like that don't mean waiting until 5 p.m. Do it when you had it scheduled. Um, and then the last thing is, which we all should know, there's no such thing as a it works emergency. Like you have a life outside of your business. So if you have a certain time scheduled, 
to to help with homework or to do this and do that have that time scheduled there's no such thing as it works emergency where you have to literally be thirsty to run in your phone every three seconds so yeah there we go I want to jump in the clothes if you don't have clothes bins for your kids especially those who can get themselves dressed you should go get it. Um, I wish I had a picture, but it's, you could just do one of them long bins that has five different, or you can even stack. Some of them stack where you can actually stack them up. And if you just say Monday, you could actually do mo Sunday through Saturday, like even put their little Saturday outfit in there. Um, or you can t do those three ones. You can get the ones that have three and you can just put them side by side so that they know to just go in there. I know our son, we, we have him prepare his clothes and it's actually a part of his chores list to prepare his clothes for the week, to do our, all the ironing and all that. So on Sunday, before we even flow into Monday, there is no ifs, ands, or buts. There are specific days that we wash specific kids' clothes. You know what I'm saying? So even that, like having, if you have multiple kids, instead of trying to do all your laundry at one time, you could say, okay, i this well my oldest he washes his own clothes so I can say me and my spouse our clothes are washed on Sundays and then it may be just on my house day that I fold them all you get what I'm saying like instead because somebody like me <laughs> if you know you know it's a lot of clothes okay it's a lot of clothes praise the lord um and you shouldn't have baskets full of unfolded clothes so you may just need to wash them and then have a specific day that you fold clothes and y'all when you do it commit to actually finishing it and this is even for people who don't have no kids or you only have one kid and you're in college or a teacher or whatever you have to get some order and structure to your life like for real commit to it stop being like um Carissa is saying like, oh, I'm, I'm blue. I'm, I, I go with the flow. Okay, boo, your business is not going to give you what you want to give it because you're just going through the flow. So right now you have to fight against that and get some order and some structure in your life. two things that came to mind first thing if you have small kids like I have younger kids um, if you're able to invest in a gym that does have trusted child care um, that way I can take them you know especially when school starts my I, I take my daughter to school come home give them breakfast and I take my two hours every day and I try to I work out for an hour then I can use the other hour to you know, do I could work, I could sit in the sauna or any of those things, but definitely it's worth it to find child, to find a gym. Planet Fitness is nice or whatever, but pay the little bit of extra money so that you can, it, it this is with mental health, working out, meeting new people. Um, also for your kids, right? For your kids to also, you know, experience other things as well. And so having that built into that, when I started that over the, um, the school year it helped so much I started to feel like okay I'm getting this this time back for me it was like literally non <laughs> non-negotiable like we're taking our like the child care hey Clea hey y'all you know what I mean getting to know them so you know find a place like find a place you can go where they where your kids can go most most gyms the child care is lit up and in the front of the gym um so you know just just you know trust God to take care of your children. You know what I mean? In the, the two hours, it, it changed things. And lastly, one thing we are, we're still perfecting it, especially if you have two stories in your house, like Rich said, bins, and she knows in my house, I have like these bins in different places. Um, just has a label on it. It may say art basket or shoes or um, makeup or electronics. And then you can put the bin and then at the end of the day, you can take the bin to the next level of the house and put things where they go. Again, it helps to create structure for your kids. And it's, you know, even my, my little ones, they know the shoe bin. So like right now, if I turn the camera around, they just took a coloring book out of that bin. And so I'm working with them, right? Not perfect, like take this, take it back to the bin. Um, because sometimes it is a lot going up and down the steps that I know that, that we can take the bin up and then take it. And so the Dollar Tree, they have the stackable ones to just get some labels and label them different things, electronics, makeup, earrings. It's something about like, I always got one earring in one place. I think it was one, yeah, whatever. Um, so that that really that really has just really helped. Like just go put it in the bin. And then we take the bin and we put the things, you know, where they need to go. And what it does is it, it gives place, things a home, right? 
you know, while, until you could get them home, right? <laughs> you know, it gives them a home, right? It looks put together and put away and then you can take it where it needs, needs to go. And I don't know if y'all know this, but gyms do have scholarships. Um, they do. And that's for everybody, like students, teachers, parents, they have scholarships. So um, listen, the Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. And a lot of people ain't ask, seeking, and knocking. All right. So you need to go and ask them if they have a scholarship. They may have one and they're willing to give it to you. So I have a question. I don't know if it's necessarily a tip. Um, how do you, um, well, honestly, during the summer, I kind of let my kids kind of just go with the flow, but now I'm trying to get them back into like the, uh, structure to like get things done at a certain time because school is coming up. Um, but I'm having some trouble with it. How do I get it back to like a structure? You know, Rachel said something to me about nap time. And um, I, here's the first thing is, is that's your house. That's the first thing first. But um, we have to have patience with them because, you know, I think of it like potty training. For two years, I told you it was okay to clean your diaper. <laughs> now I want you to sit on the toilet. And so there's this, it, it, it takes patience on my, on my half. And so like yesterday, I like, you know, this week I started the nap time thing and it was like, I spend more time trying to get them to a nap than the actual nap. But the, that's where the, the work has to go. And it, you know, for me, I want it to happen instantly, but it's just, they have to know that you're serious. And so it just has to be every day. Like we, it, and so it, it's the more structured the parent is, the more structured the child is. And, and that's just, that's just, that's this point blank period because they don't run the show even when it feel like they're running the show the more structured the you know what I mean and, and it, it just it's just and so even like with the so the nighttime bedtime we've gotten a lot um we've got a lot better with but it's just like it's good like when, I, when Jeff puts them to bed he's just stern and so they just lay there and they go to bed you know what I mean and so um and that's what I that's just what I noticed it's just the the, the patience of it and know that they're getting and they're just knowing like if I'm more structured they'll be more structured like you know it's at it's, it's like when I had to make the decision so like when school starts I wouldn't have been able to be on the zoom and I had to be okay with that not that it's not my responsibility to get the information it's my responsibility to find the recording to do all of that but it's also my responsibility to know that I, eight o'clock was the time that my daughter has to get into the tub and, you know, I'm a prey with her. And so I had to, I have to, even as life comes up, right, understand that I wanted to create this structure with it. So I have to keep the structure because they'd be like, mom ain't going to do whatever. She's just saying that, you know what I mean? Like they, they can see that. And so I would say, just be patient, have the same grace and mercy that our father has for us. Right. And just keep on doing it, keep on doing it keep on doing it and it's, it's going to be frustrating sometimes especially with the small ones but they they will get it right because you're trying to reprogram them not program them reprogramming often is harder because you have to get the old programming out and so for a whole entire summer you let me go with the flow and so now I have to reprogram it and so there's just the there's the there's the patience of it all and so they will get it even when it doesn't seem like you're getting it, this is, this is how this is going to be. We're turning the TV off. We're not watching this. You're going to go read. You know what I mean? And then, and, and that's just, that's just, that's just that. And so I had to remember that for myself, the more structured I am, you know, you can always, you, you can always like, you, if you see meet a very meticulous person, you see their kid, they kind of got some of those same like, characteristics you know what I mean just because they are they are they are literally our creation and being nurtured by the things that are happening in our home you know and that's just that's just that that's from the head flows and so I have to take personal responsibility for and that doesn't say that kids are not you know that they don't do things and honoring and not listen but um 
I have to be able to say, okay, what, what, what quality in me is making this come out? Right. You know what I mean? It, kids go to bed on time all over around the country. Right. So it's not something that my kids can do. Kids clean up after themselves. Kids do all of those things. And so I just give myself the opportunity to self-reflect because if I can get it, then I can push it out because I'm going to be more willing to, you know, it's not easy. Right. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. Trying to get it. So I know we have a recognition Zoom for corporate starting in about four minutes. And so I'm going to wrap this up. We may have to go ahead and run back a part two closer to um, maybe even next week, like to just go through. I know I'd love to hear from teachers more. And maybe you guys can kind of think and strategize since you're on here so you can guys can bring back tips. And even for those who are maybe full time, because honestly, those of y'all who are full time in school, especially undergrad, it's the discipline for you. OK, it's going to be the saying no. It's going to be the ain't no party for me. Ain't no after event like I'm going in to the wherever y'all have and I'm working my business I'm making my TikToks and then I can go it's the lunch periods it's the planning periods and all of that and then I will tell you guys um just to what you said Joquel um and I mean to each his own but I'm gonna say what works for me okay stop allowing them to get off schedule we don't do it like the, our schedule we remain in the same schedule all year round so yes my 15 year old still goes to bed on time. He, I don't allow him to stay up all night. That's not a habit I desire for his life. Um, and that's period. And maybe that, like he just said, is from the head flow. So maybe that starts with you. Maybe you stay up too late and you like, well, they can stay up too late. It's the weekend. Mm, why? Why are you breaking their habits? Like, why are you doing that? You're, you're confusing them. And so that's something we do. And when it comes to nap time, you have to fight. You literally have to fight. And then it's partnership. So for example, today I was putting my kids down for their nap. One, I went to sleep. The other one wasn't going to sleep. And so I said, all right, daddy, go on ahead in there and put that boy to sleep. <laughs> and then dad put him to sleep. But I could easily been like, all right, you ain't got to take no nap tonight. Absolutely not. You go in there and take your nap. You know what I mean? So you have to fight. You literally have to fight. And if it's just you, baby, it's, it, I feel you. I feel you. You still got to fight and do it. You still got to fight and do it. Like, I'm going to tell y'all, and this is just because I've been a single mom. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Like, seriously, you have to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You have to just, you know, thank God every single day for the strength to be the single mom that he has you as in this moment. God has equipped you, like he should say it. And so as a single mom, man up, like, it's okay. You, you may move a little different than other people because you're a single mom, but you're strong enough to do this. You really are. You are strong enough to do this. And so some people won't say that to you because they're not in your situation. I'm saying it. You, you can do it. During basketball season, I am a straight up single mom. And I be like, praise the Lord, help me, Jesus. But God helps me through every basketball season and I am still married. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm still married, praise the Lord. Cause I know he'd be sick of me, but I'd be sick of basketball. So I felt that, um, but I'm gonna pray. We gonna hop off here because the other Zoom, I love y'all. We'll come back. We're gonna do a round two. There's so much more tips. And those of y'all who didn't speak, but you had like that tickle in your stomach, next time me and Keisha gonna be quiet and y'all gonna talk the whole time. How about that? Thank you. Thank you everybody for sharing tonight. I am actually on Blue Cross Blue Shield's website right now, trying to check it out as I hop over to this other Zoom. I'm going, actually Keisha gonna pray us out and then we gonna get up off here. God, we are so grateful for this moment. We're grateful for this space, God. We're grateful that you that you think of us, that you want us to be equipped for greatness, God. I thank you for every mother, every father, every teacher, every grandparent, every every person supporting a student or a person, all of it, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for the busyness of our life, God. And I ask, God, that you just give us structure, that you give us consistency, God, and you take the word excuse out of our vocabulary, God. Our lives are not a reason for us not to be successful, God. So we will plan, we will plan, we will use wisdom and we will thrive in all seasons. In your name we pray, amen. Bye guys, I will put this up on um, YouTube. Bye y'all, see y'all later.